I love it, hate it, don't care, it don't matter. Changing the landscape of golf was the Good Good Desert Open. We're gonna go through the numbers so we can have a good idea of exactly what happened, what this compares and relates to, and I, this is audience partic participation here. I need your help. I need you to comment below. Let me know what you thought of it in terms of like the numbers, not like, oh, I hated the broadcast or the, like, okay, there's gonna be things we're gonna talk about too that can improve what we saw, but in general, like first iteration of this, this is like a, the prototype. Obviously there's pieces that aren't working properly. It's a prototype first of its kind. So from that perspective, that's where we've got to place ourselves and say, okay, do we love it? Do we hate it? Uh, what's the future look like based on the prototype model? That's where we're going to kind of place ourselves here. Let's dive into the numbers. We're going to talk about those. We're going to talk about what this cost, not cost to put on cost for the creators who are there and was it worth it and how to make it better. We're going to talk about that and looking to the future, what type of courses and locations would be perfect for these types of events. All right, let's dive in. This is exciting stuff. The numbers for the good, good desert open championships. And we really don't have a lot, let's say to compare it to except for live because live initially broadcast their product live. And it was really the only live golf, you know, product out there like live golf, professional golf. So we're going to compare it to the live numbers to get an idea of what good, good this thing brought to the table compared to some of the best players in the world. Whether you like live or not, it doesn't matter. It's some of the best players, professional players in the world, and they were live on YouTube for a while. They still are for the most part. Okay. In terms of like, you could still see it there. So let's look at the numbers that this pulled. So part one of the desert open was aired on YouTube. And I don't have a screenshot of the concurrent viewers watching that event, but what everybody has said was they had 100,000 concurrent viewers. That means when you click on the live stream, there's 100,000 people watching live. And that's enormously huge in comparison. Let's look at, I took a screenshot of the Live Las Vegas round two, which would have been Friday, nice day to watch golf, whatever. Just they had concurrent live viewers, 25,000. This is a incredible location. Las Vegas, Las Vegas, where the Super Bowl is, Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, Bryson DeChambeau, John Rahm, a leaderboard that will rival any major championship leaderboard. They, these guys were duking it out. It was an incredible event on YouTube live, 25,000 live concurrent viewers, one quarter the amount that the Good Good Desert Open had with uh, a bunch of YouTubers and a few other, you know, celebrities, uh, sports celebrities, let's say non-golf YouTubers, a few of those. But for the most part, a bunch of golf YouTubers drawing 100,000. So what do you make of that? Is that important? Is that relevant? Does that mean anything to you? But the numbers are the numbers. That Desert Open had quadruple the amount of live viewers as the same, you know, time frame live golf event. So moving on, how many um, viewers view does it currently have those live streams? So let's first look at the live golf most popular live stream. This is the, and these have been on the live website for oh, since they were out. So over a year. We have the most watched live stream is from the Boston final round a year ago. And they're at, you know, 800, over 800,000 
views, 889,000 views from over a year ago. So they're currently under 900,000 views. Live Golf Boston live stream. Okay. So now what does good, good have? This is the good, good numbers after 24 hours, 859,000 views, 24 hours later, after the live stream, part one, part two, 24 hours had 398,000 that they uploaded. This is the piece that aired on Peacock and they uploaded it on Google channel the following day, 398,000. Now, currently, part one on Google's channel has 984,000 views. So roughly 100,000 more than the most popular live stream from the Live Golf YouTube channel. Isn't that interesting? And part two has 629,000 views currently which would be in the top 10 of all live live broadcasts on its own. That's part two. So why do we compare it to, to live? Well, that's the most relevant thing to compare it to live golf on YouTube. How many players were in the desert open? There were, um, roughly 58 play, like 58 players. So it's very comparable to the 56 players on live 54 and two wild cards. So whatever, it's about the same amount of players on live as this, this event, this desert open. And from what I hear, we don't have the peacock numbers per se, but I reached out to Matt Kendrick, CEO of good, good. He told me that he doesn't have those numbers either. However, he was informed that peacock NBC was they were incredibly happy with the numbers that they got from Peacock. It was difficult because you had to switch over from YouTube to Peacock to see part two. And then you had to, if you didn't already have a subscription, you had to pay your $5.99 for a month subscription to be able to watch the final two hours. Okay. So a little awkwardness going on in terms of like, okay, I get half for free and then I get half, I got to pay $6. Six bucks, whatever, it's no big deal. You're gonna lose a ton of viewers by doing that. And that's just the way it is. We didn't know that part two was gonna be uploaded on Good Goods channel the following day, but it was fantastic. You could watch it. So that's the numbers. How is this relevant? Well, there were certain groundbreaking moments in the world of golf over the years. Obviously live television many years ago, groundbreaking. It took golf to a whole new level. Uh, Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicholas, Lee Trevino, Gary Player, these guys, groundbreaking, transformative in the world of golf. Then you get kind of later on, uh, you get Jack Nicholas, and uh, in the 90s, you got Greg Norman and Fred Couples and Davis Love. Pretty exciting players to watch. And then Payne Stewart, one of my favorites, just brought cool into the world of golf and John Daly rolls on the scene and just, he was kind of a transformative, brought golf to that everyday kind of beer drinking, you know, party animal style person into the world of golf. Then obviously Tiger Woods rolls on the scene and just blows it apart. And everybody's grandmother wants to know what's going on Sunday afternoon at whatever tournament Tiger's playing. Groundbreaking. Now, is this on that level? I'm asking you, the viewer, everybody comment. Is this on par? Obviously, good, good is not Tiger Woods, but we're talking about transforming golf. That's what we're talking about. Is this changing the landscape of how golf is viewed? Because it gets to this, the essence of golf. What is This event was the essence of golf, if you think about it. It is exactly what everybody does in their group. You go out with your buddies and you have a good time. That's what this was. How much did we make? Zero. We didn't make any money. I didn't get paid. Nobody covered my expenses. It cost me a couple thousand dollars to go. Like I had to pay my way, my airfare, my plane, my 
playing ticket. My camera guy's playing ticket. Airbnb, rental car. It costs money to go for the, as far as I know, I don't know if anybody, I'm sure there were some people that were, their trip was paid for. I don't know who, but it wasn't me. I had to pay my own way. So that's like everybody else. Pay your way to play and have a great time. Enjoy the sport. What's on the line? A trophy. No money. No money. We didn't get anything. All we were allowed to do, well, we were allowed to do whatever, but we make our own content and hope that we get a return on our investment. I felt like the return on the investment was the fact that it was so much fun and it's a groundbreaking event that it's revolutionary. Is it a groundbreaking revolutionary event? Because it definitely cost all the creators, as far as we know, a lot of money to go and be a part of it. So looking forward, how many of these are there going to be every year? How much is it going to cost us to go there? And is it worth it? Is it worth it? Like I'm willing to do it for the viewer, for my audience, for you guys, so that you could see it like from my round. And it got, you know, a fair amount of views on this channel. So I was grateful to be able to do that and to bring it to my audience in that particular way. And I was willing to spend the money to do it, to be a part of it. Because it was, in my opinion, one of those revolutionary, groundbreaking, transformative events in the world of golf. If, if not, let me know. Just let me know if you think it's, it's that or not. This is a waste of time. I'm curious of the feedback. How can we make it better? Okay, I've got some ideas here, and this is where it's audience participation as well. How can we make it better? A lot of people didn't like that it was at night. I didn't either. It was cold February at night. In Arizona, it's not normally that cold, but the last couple of Februarys I've been to Arizona, it's been pretty cold and rainy. So <laughs> that, that was tough. It was cold. I was bundled up. I had like long johns underneath. We were bundled up and making the best of it and just the adrenaline kept us warm. So it was a good time. I don't think night was great, obviously. I don't think uh, how, well, what I would do is this. I would do a shotgun start because we teed off at 5, 10, the leaders teed off at 7, 10. So two hours from us to the leaders, you're not going to see any of us on any TV coverage. I got a highlight clip, fine, but they didn't roll live for two hours. So we were nearly done by that point. So there you go. I think a shotgun start would solve a lot of issues because what happened was a lot of people showed up right there when the gates open at four and then the leaders don't go off for three hours. So people are just milling about for a long time, which made the first couple holes really exciting for, for me because we had a lot of fans there. So that was cool. However, I think it would be way better if it was a shotgun start similar to what Liv does. I would implement that. I probably wouldn't have it at night, although I didn't hate it. Um, in winter, at night, you run some risks of weather and coldness and all kinds of things, and the fans have to suffer too. So I would do it during the day, warmer locations. Desert's fine in winter, typically. And I would shotgun start it. What are other things we could do to make it better? Now, you could look at the broadcast and say, that's also going to be clunky. I thought it was great. I thought George Savarikas, Andres um, Gonzalez was phenomenal. I thought Blair O'Neill was great. I didn't hear everybody else. There's going to be some technical difficulties here and there. A lot of the people don't have any experience on course commentating. So that's going to take some time. But I think what I heard, I liked. I thought it was authentic. I thought it was... Um, just real for the audience that's watching. We don't need, um, you know, we don't need David Faraday out there or, or, or Dottie Pepper. Like, although she's like the best, like, I don't know if we need that. We need some more raw, authentic commentators. So I like, I didn't like, I didn't hate the barstool guys being there, Riggs, and I thought it was good. And I think they would only get better as time goes, goes on with these events. So I thought that was fine. You let me know what other ways it can be made better. But for what it was, I thought it was great from what I heard. What are some top locations now in terms of 
where these should take place. That's where, again, I want you to say, we know the next one is in French Lick Resort, Indiana. I would hope that French Lick Resort would say, come creators, here's your room, make content for a couple of days pre-event, enjoy your stay, and let's take some of the burden off the financial obligation for coming. Because that gets get, get spendy. So I would hope that would be part of the deal next time. And we'll see. We'll see how NBC uh, does that. We'll see what the French Lick Resort, they're going to get a lot of publicity. So French Lick, if you're listening. And I think it would be perfect for resort-style locations that want to attract a lot more viewers. This is the way to attract a ton of viewers on that YouTube platform. So... French Lick, I think is great. The Greenbrier Resort, I think would be a phenomenal location. Stream Song, I think would be phenomenal. It's kind of out in the middle of nowhere, so it might be difficult getting fans in and out of there, but I think that's a resort course that would be really, really awesome to host one of these events. Uh, Pinehurst, you could do something at the Cradle and on course. That would be phenomenal too. Again, a nice resort. You got uh, Whistling Straits could be pretty awesome as well. I, I would stick to close to big cities because it's way more fun in person than watching it. I think um, like going, like for example, the Masters, I mean, that's fun either way, but I don't hate watching the Masters at home because you get some awesome television coverage. And then going there is pretty awesome too, but it's a totally different experience being there versus watching it on television. I think this is something that is pretty awesome to be there because we're not playing for money. There's not a whole lot at stake other than having fun. So there's gonna be a lot more engagement between creator and fan. So that's why I think going is way, way more exciting than just watching. Although from what I watched, I, I can't say I, I disliked it it can improve and you'll let me know how we could do that. So those are the numbers. Those are what it cost. And I think a little few ways to make it better. You're going to participate commenting below and let us know how else that can happen and where these should be in the future. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. Thanks for listening. We'll see you. Talk with you soon.